like to roll the dice. By chance they came on a devil's game, and gosh, they paid the price. Paid the price. And now they're fighting for their lives on a mission fraught with dread. And if they proceed but don't succeed, well, the devil will take their heads. Cuphead 2017 by Studio MDHR. It's that game well known on the surface for its 1930s hand drawn cartoon art style and overall theme, as shown immediately as you start the game up and even more well known for its high difficulty among those who've actually played it. The first and perhaps last time I played this was around the time it came out, from beginning to end, unlocking every achievement at the time. I decided to replay the base game as a refresher in preparation for going through the DLC for the first time. Not much of a plot here. You get told why you're doing what you're doing through an actual picture book. Cuphead gambled both his and his pal Mugman's souls to the devil himself, and then lost. Instead of taking their souls, the devil decides to just send the two brothers to collect other people's souls. Then the game starts from there. With how equally prevalent Mugman is, I kinda wish the name of the game involved Mugman too, instead of just Cuphead. Back when the game first came out, only player 2 was allowed to be Mugman. But some updates later, Mugman became selectable, although you have to go to the title screen every time to switch. This match will get red hot. Here goes. From the artwork to the audio, the whole game is supposed to feel like you're playing a cartoon from the 1930s, and it does a really amazing job at that. Just about every piece of art in the game is hand-drawn and painted, with only the moving stuff being colored digitally, I think. Although rarely, stop motion is used too. Jimmy the Great level, and the whole thing is just carved and covered in glue and sand. When seeing the actual gameplay, all the characters and objects move around the screen at 60 frames per second. Though the actual animations go at a classic cinematic 24 FPS, which is a little bit of an odd contrast side by side, but it's whatever. Going more all out with authenticity, I think all of its music is done in a recording studio with actual instruments. During fights, I honestly could barely hear it sometimes, but to be fair, I probably could have just fiddled with my audio settings to fix that. Here's a real high class bout. You're up. Cuphead is a run and gun boss rush overall, with a few actual run and gun stages here and there, as well as some shoot 'em up flying sections where you can move around the entire screen. The gameplay and tight controls are very easy to get the hang of, and leaves a lot of room for extremely skillful play. You run, duck, jump, dash, dash, shoot, use EX attacks, and something really unique to this genre, parry. The shooting honestly feels very weak to me. Like, there's no kick or power to them, but I guess that's just a given for any run and gun game. At least most of the super attacks feel like you're doing big damage each time you use them. You can shoot in 8 hole directions, even while standing still, which is easy to forget because of how much you normally have to move around. Dashing is really cool in that your hitbox shrinks significantly during it, so instead of, say, ducking under attacks, you could just dash. The parrying is a pretty cool feature for its multiple functions. Evading attacks, getting rid of attacks, and filling up the super meter. The timing for it is very lenient too. It's just weird to me though that anything pink is what you can parry. Maybe it's just for gameplay purposes? Easily identifiable color? I don't know. You find an extremely diverse set of wacky cartoon characters with jokes and puns and wordplays all over the place, from their names to the stuff they attack with. If you lose to them, they taunt you with a rhyme usually, and you can see how much progress you made on the death screen. 
It almost looks like you're trying to fill a meter, then bringing their health down when you look at it. You can also see on there how many phases a boss has. The last phase isn't necessarily the hardest. It could be the easiest, in fact, and may only seemingly be difficult due to the stress of being close to beating the boss. A boss fight from start to finish only actually lasts for approximately 2 minutes, and you're only ever spending so much time with a boss because of how hard they can be. The actual run and gun stages are probably the weakest part of the game. While the cartoon stuff is neat to look at, playing these stages aren't as cool as fighting the bosses. It just feels like these stages constantly throw random shit at you for the most part, with a very little to no breaks. I've noticed that a lot of people seem to generally dislike and or are really shit at the flying shoot 'em up sections compared to the regular gameplay. And I'm going to assume part of the reason is that you've been taught more about run and gun than the aerial parts. It doesn't help that the very first plane section boss is actually quite the difficulty spike. Like, you're not given a somewhat easy first boss for this kind of thing. These plane parts are actually really cool, with my favorite feature being that you can shrink yourself at will to speed up and go through tight openings or escape danger zones quickly. You get a bunch of neat weapons to play with, as well as charms, which act like equipment with passive bonus effects. They're all very good in some way, some being more situational than others. In the aerial shmup sections, you're only allowed the default weapons, and the charms are the only things that can be switched around to be effective. I mostly just use the pea shooter, spread, and charge shot myself. The pea shooter is the default weapon in the game, and it's actually very strong, but it can be a little hard to aim against the small moving targets. The spread is kind of like the average video game shotgun, terrible from afar, but extremely good up close. It's also got the benefit of easily getting rid of certain projectiles. The charge shot is too fucking strong, even after the nerfs it had. Its downside is supposed to be that you have to aim it, but aiming in this game just for a single fully charged shot is extremely easy. Cuphead's a very difficult game. I can imagine people looking at it and thinking it's just a lighthearted cartoon game but then they go into it only to learn that they have to be way more involved than they thought. Its high difficulty is mainly because of just how much shit gets thrown at you. Attacks don't even come at you very fast for the most part, there's just an often overwhelming amount of it. It gets extremely chaotic to the point that it can be a little tiring trying to pay attention to what's going on in the screen. Avoiding attacks, watching your step, making sure you're actually hitting the boss. There's never a mindless moment, and you're perpetually engaged, thanks to all that, though. The difficulty settings are simple, regular, and then after you beat the game once, Expert becomes unlocked. As if regular mode may not be hard enough for you, Expert mode can get real brutal with the amount of additional shit that gets thrown your way, and at a slightly faster pace. Interesting thing about the concept of simple difficulty. Not only does it make the bosses easier, but it also outright removes or skips entire phases. So if people were just playing it for the silly cartoons, and not the difficult game, then they won't see more of the cool animations. The last bosses in the game don't even have a simple difficulty, just regular and expert. So if someone's been playing on simple difficulty up to that point, then they're going to be in for a brutal treat. After beating a boss or a stage, you get ranked at the end based on your time, amount of HP left over, parry uses, super meter spent, and skill level. All mostly self-explanatory. The skill level I'm pretty sure just means the difficulty setting you played on. You can only get a B plus rank at most on simple, A plus on regular, and S on expert. On the run and gun stages, the highest rank you can get is the P rank, pacifist, for not killing anything. It's extremely easy to get very late in the game since you can just overload on HP by that point and tank through everything. Cuphead just has the one DLC so far, the delicious last course. It's more bosses, some new equipment to play with, and a new character, Miss Chalice. The DLC seems to be intended to be played after beating the base game with how hard they can get, but it can be accessed very early on regardless. Some of the bosses here have become my favorite out of all the Cuphead bosses, if just because of their surprise gimmicks. I didn't bother too much with the new equipment past my curiosity. 
Miss Chalice herself is an extremely good character if you can get the hang of using her. Unlike the default characters, she can double jump, as well as dodge roll through attacks. You can even take her to the base game as soon as you unlock her. It's just weird to me though that you have to equip Miss Chalice to use her, and not actually select her. Cuphead's not only a cool game aesthetically, but it's also a really fun challenge. The length of the game is highly dependent on how good or bad you are. One playthrough might take someone 8 hours, it might take someone else 30. I decided to no damage all the bosses on the highest difficulty, DLC included, just because I found the game to be fun. Cuphead has had loads and loads of delays and setbacks prior to its release, and I can't imagine it's just because hand drawing shit is hard. Still, I'm glad the end product is as great as it is right now. <laughs>